Everyone creates it, but no one wants to talk about it. Trash. What happens to our garbage after we throw it away? Every year in North America, it's estimated that we produce over 300 million tons of solid waste, a number so big it's virtually meaningless. In this episode of Shift, we track and store our garbage for 30 days to learn what our waste footprint really looks like and get an inside look at the next big recycling movement that's set to transform the way you think about your trash. Questions. Once they get in you, they can take you almost anywhere. And when you start looking for answers, you realize that other people are searching for the same things. We are spending the next year taking a closer look at the things we do and say every day without questioning why. This is our way of exploring all the big and small questions that shape our lives, and we want you to join us. So what are people throwing out in Vancouver? In 2013, 1.3 million tons of solid waste ended up in our landfills, and over 2 million tons ended up in recycling and composting facilities. Our garbage is either burned at a facility in Burnaby, British Columbia, or buried at one of our two landfills. Our recyclables are collected at depots, then sorted into material types, and reprocessed here in Vancouver and abroad. In January 2015, Vancouver joined a growing community of global cities and introduced a citywide organics ban in our landfill. This means food waste and yard waste from over 2 million people now must be recycled. We're at the Vancouver landfill to learn why. We're heading to the active part of the landfill first so we can find out where our garbage really goes. It's early spring and the sheer number of birds feeding here is astounding, including hundreds of eagles and hawks. It's really interesting to see that one bag that we throw away per day turns into thousands of bags here and that a lot of it's made up of organic material, a third of it. Right now we're where they drop it off because all of this will be compacted down to actually make maximum use of the landfill. The waste below this completed section of the landfill has been capped and covered. Over a third of this is organic material that could have been diverted and recycled. These organics are an incredible waste of energy, nutrients and fresh water that could be used to grow new food every year. When organics decompose in landfills, they release methane, a greenhouse gas 20 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Landfills in the US release 6.3 million tons of methane into the environment every year, which is roughly equal to the annual emissions from 24 million cars. We're meeting with three local innovators later this month to learn how they're diverting organics from landfills and building a better future from our waste. Steve's prepping the patio. We are going to store, sort, and track our garbage, compost, and recycling over the next 30 days to see how much we throw out over the course of one month. Oh, we're bagging all of the organic materials, so all of our food scraps are gonna go on this one. Uh, that one's gonna be all the rest of the garbage. We're using clear bags so we can actually see everything that we're putting into these. And then in the middle, we're gonna do all the recyclers, all the plastics and cardboards uh, we're gonna accumulate here. I'm kind of scared now that I look at the balcony. I think there's going to be more than we expect. <laughs> Today we're meeting with Mark O'Hara from Northwest Waste Solutions. They're a local independent waste company that's responsible for the collection and diversion of about 12% of Vancouver's total annual waste. Currently you're at our Vancouver Kent facility and this is where we take materials, separate them and transfer them to our Lytton facility. And this is fiber, cardboard, and organic materials, and packaged organic materials for depackaging. Five years ago, Northwest Waste began building this facility in anticipation of a citywide organic span. They currently ship organics from here to their soil farm in Lytton three times a day. So how much organic material do you receive like, on a daily basis? So we get anywhere from 30 to 50 trucks a day, and it'll vary in the weight of that truck from four to nine tons. Well, we've been in the business for over 25 years now. What's changed with waste over 25 years? Everything. Uh, yeah. There was one time the concept that you threw it away and it disappeared, right? People are now realizing that it doesn't go away. There's picking up trash and then there's diverting materials. And that's what we're really all about, is taking those products that used to go to landfill, and still do in most cases, and utilizing them to go full circle. It's one thing to have a couple bags of compost at home that we've been storing, and it's another thing to see giant piles come out of a truck. And the next step for us is to go up to a farm to see where what we saw today, those big piles are gonna be used to grow food. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we're heading to Lytton, a small town located about three hours north of Vancouver in the Fraser Canyon, to see firsthand what happens after a Northwest truck drops off a load of organics. We're standing in the middle of our soil farm right now. That's what we actually call this. We're kind of looking at the processes. The material comes in, processing it, processing it through a tub grinder, out onto our curing pad where it goes through the appropriate cycle. Uh, to treat the soil and make sure it's safe to use for human uh, consumption, essentially, of products that are grown with it. How long does it take to get from what's coming out right now to finished compost that I can use in a garden? 12 to 18 months. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, okay. it's a long cycle, the uh, full maturity of the soil. This would be an example of the finished compost here. Yeah, it looks like, like the best soil. It's got huge value for organic matter. It's got a lot of micronutrients. This is everything that you'll see in our transfer facilities yeah. down there. So, I mean, if we eat it, if we throw it away into our garbage and it's, a, it's some sort of food stock, it's in here. 90% of that product is going yeah. into a landfill. That's what we've been throwing away for the past 100 years. It's crazy. Cool. This is uh, one section of our farm. It's about um, uh, roughly about a 70 acre field and we produce our certified organic alfalfa here. And something like this could go to say a dairy farm in Vancouver or Vancouver area that yep. would then give certified organic milk. Absolutely. Yeah. Also we feed it to our cows. It's a, we produce our own feed on farm here for mm. the cows. It's cool to see Northwest Waste at the beginning of their full circle diversion plan and the potential this has to grow. Next, we're going to check in on our trash and meet two companies who are doing something completely different with your waste. It's time to take out the trash. It's a weird thing to so carefully like, take apart all your trash and figure out like what goes with what, and then you begin to notice like how much you're actually accumulating. Ah! Trash bag one. It's not lost on me that I'm putting plastic into a plastic bag either. It just seems so ridiculous. Plastic, paper. Crazy. Harvest Power is a growing player in North America's organics management industry. They divert over 2 million tons of organics waste from landfills every year across 30 sites in the United States and Canada. Today, Louise Roxby is giving us a tour of their biogas and composting facilities here in Richmond. Harvest Power Canada is uh, Richmond and Ontario. And so here at Harvest Power, we take in uh, food waste and uh, take it from commercial as well as municipal contracts. So we look after uh, about 2.2 million people in the Lower Mainland. Harvest Power works with everything from yard waste, also called green waste, to prepackaged food and table scraps, or food waste. Calorie-rich food waste is processed in their energy garden, which uses anaerobic digestion to transform the waste into a biogas consisting primarily of methane and carbon dioxide. So the tunnels are loaded, they're mixed with a green waste and food waste, so it's about a 50-50 mix. So our tunnels are a gas-tight environment where um, the microorganisms do their work. Uh, we leave it for about two weeks, then basically during that two weeks, liquids percolated over the top of the food waste and the liquid is sent into the methane digesters where the uh, biogas is produced and then it's sent through the engines to turn it into electricity. How much energy output can you get from an operation like this in a year? We do one megawatt a day. It's pumped straight into BC Hydro's lines and heats about 750 homes a year. What's left in the anaerobic digestion tunnels joins green waste offloaded in a separate tipping area. This waste is heaped into piles, then covered with existing compost material. We're chatting with Scott Kerr at the screening plant to see what happens next. Looking around, this, your, the scale of your operations here are huge. How much uh, compost are we in the middle of right now? So we're in about 30,000 yards or so, the pile that we're standing on that stretches back to the east a little. Um, and we make about 200,000 yards over the course of a year. Basically the microorganisms do their thing for eight or nine weeks and then um, nutrient rich compost is made from that. That's sold to the local farmers and uh, landscapers. So You can take it both ways. You yeah. can get the electricity on one side and then the compost on the other side. It's the circular economy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what everybody's talking about. Like half the, of the volume 
is recycling and then the rest is trash and compost, so interesting and dirty. The diversion operations at Harvest Power and Northwest Waste Solutions are impressive. But what if there was a way to transform food waste directly into a new food source in just a few days? Interra Feed Corporation builds itself as the future of the world's food supply. We're meeting with CEO Brad Marchant to learn how black soldier fly larvae are poised to change the way the world produces food. Yeah, so the food waste comes in uh, typically in, in 10 ton trucks and those trucks dump here. Uh, it's mostly like this, it's just fruits and vegetables. It gets all ground up into a salsa-like uh, consistency, and that's what we pump, and then we feed the insects that. How much time will it take the larvae to eat this? So this is about a 20-ton load, so this facility is designed for 100 tons a day, so five times this. When we feed them, it's about four hours later, it's gone, and they're ready to eat again. So just so you guys know, so that grinding machine yep. takes all the food waste, uh, puts it into a pump, and it pumps it across the top into one of these three big tanks. And we keep these tanks at a certain temperature, so it doesn't allow any bacteria to start, aerobic or anaerobic, okay. which is why nothing smells. Intera produces two products in their Langley facility. Larvae, which are cooked and dried, then shipped off as livestock, fish and pet feed, and insect frass or larva droppings, which is an organic natural fertilizer high in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It feels like I'm on a psychedelic just watching how it's all kind of just moving-ish. It's weird. They're finished eating. Now they want to go become a fly again, but we don't let them do that. We would screen these from the, the soil, and that's the fertilizer. And, and these guys, you know, they look kind of icky, but they're really dry. They're warm. No, they're very warm. So they're breathing like you and me, yeah. and that's where the moisture goes. <laughs> well, that's those same live guys, but now they're all dried out. So they've been uh, washed, cooked, and then dried. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> it's like a sunflower seed, or? Yeah, yeah. totally like a sunflower seed. Yeah, it's actually, seed. it's really good. <laughs> so we're making about uh, five tons a day of this, and about seven tons a day of the fertilizer product. Wow and there's a half a ton in each one of these bags, give or take. 600 kilos, 500 kilos, 575, so a little over half a ton in each bag. Um, so yeah, this comes right out of the insect rearing facility, as you saw. Yep. Uh, we don't add anything to it, we just simply bag it. Wow. Um, and then it's, then it's sent off to the uh, organic farmers. It's such a cool process. When we started this journey a month ago, we never pictured ending up on a fly farm in Langley. Now it's time to see what 30 days of our own trash looks like. Well, look at this. <laughs> it's quite a bit of garbage. A giant pile of trash, our trash. Yeah, yeah. This is what we use in a month. <laughs> I don't know, I, I was just gonna, I was expecting more. Oh, we're gonna take it downstairs and sort it. Wait, so. yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy. Over the course of the past month, we saved 137 pounds of garbage in total, or about 70 pounds each which annually puts us well under the Canadian average of 1,700 pounds per person per year. 60% of that was organic waste. It was the heaviest by far. Plastic, on the other hand, was much lighter, but took up three times as much space as our organics. Recycling organics is far easier than we thought. It wasn't messy, didn't smell, or attract rodents like critics on our own building and elsewhere in Vancouver claimed. As the organics diversion movement gains momentum around the world, it will help drought-prone areas reclaim fresh water and improve local food security by returning valuable nutrients to local farmers and by providing sustainable feed for fish, cattle, and poultry. How quickly this movement spreads depends on all of us taking a closer look at what we're throwing away.